There's a plot of land in California that may have been formed by glaciers like 20,000 years ago and has never been home to more than 400 people at once until the fall of 1977. Today, this 22-acre island is visited by 1.5 million people every year. This is All Request History. If you're curious about the history of, well, anything, subscribe here, put your request in the comments, and it could be the next video on All Request History. This week, the history of Alcatraz. Located in the icy waters of the San Francisco Bay, this famous prison has appeared in more than a dozen movies. It has had a half a dozen songs written about it, it's the subject of many poems, and its story goes further back than you may think. Its earliest history is said to have been used by Native American tribes who considered it to be a place of isolation and punishment. It has no source of fresh water and limited plant and animal life. In 1775, a Spanish naval officer, Lieutenant Juan Manuel de Alaya, explored this landmass and found nothing more than a haven for seabirds. He named it Isle de los Alcatraces. This is Spanish for the Island of Pelicans. Question, who is the most famous prisoner of Alcatraz? The answer is coming up. In 1849, the Spanish sold the island to the U.S. government one year before California became a state of the Union. Now called Alcatraz, they built the first U.S. lighthouse here to help protect what they called the Golden Gate to the U.S. From 1854 to 1860, Alcatraz was fortified with weaponry including over 100 cannons and even electrical underwater explosives. At the end of the Civil War in 1865, there was little use for the massive fort, so it remained dormant until 1907 when it was converted into a U.S. military prison. It housed soldiers for adultery, insubordination, attempted AWOL, or even conduct unbecoming an officer. By 1934, there were only 32 hard case prisoners serving their time for the U.S. military. And even though the prison was an isolated location and strong currents made escape nearly impossible, military officials planned to move the prisoners and close the barracks forever. However, these unlucky 32 got to stay right where they were. The U.S. Bureau of Prisons negotiated with the government to convert the island into a maximum security federal penitentiary designed to hold the most dangerous criminals in the United States as the world's most secure prison. It quickly became known as The Rock. And on August 11th, 1934, its doors opened, or should I say closed. 137 prisoners were ferried across the San Francisco Bay that were formerly residents of the Leavenworth Penitentiary in Kansas. Throughout its history, the rock housed the likes of Machine Gun Kelly, Robert Stroud, also known as the Birdman of Alcatraz. And to answer our earlier question, who was the most famous prisoner of Alcatraz? Mob boss Al Capone. All the island's defenses and natural barriers made escape difficult. In fact, wardens were quoted as saying escape was impossible. There were 14 known escaped attempts involving 36 inmates. Of those, 23 were caught, 7 were shot and killed, and 3 drowned in the icy shark-infested waters surrounding the island. Now, probably not the three you're thinking of because these three bodies were actually found. The three you might be thinking of are of the most famous attempt in 1962. Frank Morris and brothers John and Clarence Anglin. They escaped by chipping away the cell walls and using a raft made of raincoats to navigate their way across the bay. Those bodies, the raft, or any evidence at all, have not been found to this day. For decades, there has been speculation about their fate. And that mystery also made for great stories. According to imdb.com, there are 412 titles about the Alcatraz prison, either movies, TV movies, specials, series, or documentaries. Here are a few of the well-known theater releases. 1962, Birdman of Alcatraz with Burt Lancaster. In 1979, Escape from Alcatraz starring Clint Eastwood. In 1996, The Rock with Sean Connery, Nick Cage, and Ed Harris. The prison was closed in 1963 due to high operating costs and the deterioration of the facilities. If you saw the Clint Eastwood movie, you saw the weak concrete chiseled away with only a spoon to form those escape holes of Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers. 
That happened only one year before its closing, and many believe that that escape was the reason that the rock was closed. The U.S. declared the island as surplus federal property and had no immediate plans for development. In 1969, a group of Native American activists occupied Alcatraz to protest federal policies regulated to indigenous peoples. People claiming to be natives from the Cherokee tribe, Mohawk, Eskimo, and Ho-Chunk tribes made their way to the island and claimed discovery. There were close to 100 occupants, including students, married couples, children, and even actor Benjamin Bratt and his family. To announce their action to the world, they wrote the Alcatraz Proclamation. You can look for it here in the show notes. In it, they basically wanted a place to call their own. They offered to purchase the land from the U.S. government, and although they did offer only $24 worth of glass beads and red cloth, their cause was admirable. They wanted to build housing, schools, and a museum. They also wanted Native American soil to be the first site entering the Golden Gate. The occupation lasted 19 months and drew significant media attention. As you can imagine, in the end, the island was not sold, and the Native Americans were asked to leave. After years of legal battles, on June 10, 1971, U.S. federal marshals, FBI agents, and special forces police swarmed the island and forcefully removed the last residents. Five women, four children, and six men. The following year, in 1972, the U.S. Congress created the Golden Gate National Recreation Area and Alcatraz Island, and all the buildings were included in the registration. It has been managed by the National Park Service ever since. It's now one of the most popular tourist destinations in the U.S., offering tours of the former prison and information about the island's history, the Native American occupancy, and all its natural features. Today, for 65 bucks, you'll get a ferry to the island and a nighttime tour where you'll get some of the many spooky experiences reported over the years like cold spots, tribal ghost sightings, inmates disappearing from cells and wandering around somewhere else in a daze, or even some visitors disappearing. If that seems a little too scary for you, well, for 10 bucks less at about 55 bucks per ticket, the day tour is a safer bet for you. Explore the prison cells, exercise yard, and other facilities while learning about its history and the stories of those who were imprisoned there. And speaking from personal experience, ask the tour guide to close the cell block doors behind you. That deafening sound will stay with you for a very long time. In 